Hi, this week we're going to talk about whether a low salt diet is going to reduce your risk of heart disease and the shocking truth that perhaps it may actually do more harm than good. And that's coming right up. Most of us think that eating a low salt diet is really good for you. So it may come as a surprise that the Institute of Medicine in 2013 actually came out with a statement that when they focus on studies looking at the connection between salt and heart disease, that one, a low salt diet was likely not helpful in most people, and two, even more surprising is that if you have heart disease, it may actually be harmful to you. And if you have heart disease, those are precisely the people who are often trying to eat a low salt diet. So what is this concern? In fact, this concern dates back to an editorial in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1972. And the concern was that you can perhaps lower blood pressure a little bit by eating a low salt diet, although that is also questionable if you look back at our first video on salt. However, there are other things that go up when you eat a low salt diet. If you measure certain hormones, you can see that renin, for example, goes up 3.6 times above normal when you eat a low salt diet. The serum aldosterone, goes up by 3.2%, but you also see rises in uh, sympathetic tone, noradrenaline and adrenaline, as well as cholesterol, triglycerides, and angiotensin. If you look at insulin resistance as well, it appears that there is an also an association between eating a low salt diet and higher levels of insulin resistance. So why is this important? Because for heart disease, blood pressure is only one of the risk factors for developing these health conditions, but higher levels of these hormones are also quite deleterious. In fact, blocking these hormones forms the very basis of our modern treatment for atherosclerosis to prevent those heart, heart attacks, strokes, we use medications to block angiotensin. A low salt diet raises angiotensin. We use beta blockers to block adrenaline, noradrenaline, and sympathetic nervous system. Whereas the low salt diet is going to raise those. We use medications to lower cholesterol. We use medications to lower insulin. And those are also things that go up with a low salt diet. So in fact, it's not simply a low salt diet can lower your blood pressure. It's a trade off in that you can lower blood pressure perhaps a little bit, but you're going to pay for that with an increase in these other hormones. And what is the overall effect on mortality? We can look at several different data points. We can look between countries, for example, and there was a very large intersalt study, which was done a few years ago, looking at this low salt diet. When you compare how much salt people eat to their life expectancy, what you find is that the countries that tend to eat more salt also have a higher life expectancy. So not exactly what we expected to find. However, this is confounded because those countries that eat more salt tend to be also a bit more modern than those that eat a low salt diet. We can look at two countries that are both first world countries to get a better sort of apples to apples comparison. So we can look at a country such as Japan, which has by far and away the highest salt consumption. And we can compare it, for example, to the Americans. And we can see that while the Japanese eat much, much more salt, their risk of heart disease is much, much lower than the Americans. Now, there are other factors at risk, obviously, at, at play here. Um, there's differences in diet, there's differences in genetics. However, if salt was really this huge increased risk of heart disease, we should ex at least expect to find some uh, correlation there. But we don't. We find the exact opposite. The countries eating a very high salt diet tend to have less heart disease. If we look within the same country, we have large surveys 
in the, in, in the United States called the NHANE survey. The first NHANE survey was done in 1972 to 1975. And what they did was they surveyed Americans, asked them what they ate, and then they compared the rates of heart disease. They broke them into four quartiles, which is number quartile number one, eating the lowest salt diet, and quartile number four, which is eating the highest salt diet. And what we see in this analysis is that the ones that are eating the least salt tend to have the highest risk of death and the highest risk of cardiovascular uh, disease as well. And this wasn't an isolated finding. There were several other NHANE studies subsequent to that. There was the NHANES 2 study, which showed exactly the same thing. When you compare those eating a low salt diet compared to the high salt diet, the low salt diet people had a higher risk of overall death as well as a higher risk of heart disease deaths. And the same thing was found in NHANES 3, which was done in the 2000s. Those eating less salt tended to have more heart disease compared to those eating more salt. Almost the exact opposite of what you might expect. So here we have data point after data point, study after study, which is all showing the same thing. And we also have very important reasons why we might think this is true. So what does the experimental data show? And we have data for that as well. In 1995, a study showed that for people who are being treated for high blood pressure, and generally we would advise those people eat a low salt diet. However, when they looked at the older age group, over 55 for example, what they found was that the group that ate the least salt had a much higher risk of death compared to the high salt diet. In fact, the highest salt diet people were dying at only about a third of the rate of the low salt people. So these sort of prospective studies also show exactly what our previous data points had showed. So what the Institute of Medicine did when they were trying to come up with some recommendations for this low salt diet is that they looked at trials which only looked at death and rates of heart disease rather than an intermediary uh, endpoint such as high blood pressure. Because remember, lowering your blood pressure is not really the goal in and of itself. The goal is to reduce your risk of heart disease. That's what you have to keep your eyes on, not whether I have lower blood pressure. If you have a lower blood pressure but higher risk of heart attack, well, I'd rather have a lower risk of heart attack. So they looked at several key data, and in 2007, the British Medical Journal looked at 10 to 15 year follow-up of two studies called the Trials of Hypertension Prevention. And these were very large studies followed for very long periods of time and looking at the effect of this low salt diet to see whether you could actually find a reduced risk of heart attacks. Unfortunately, the intervention was unable to find any benefit of that. In 2011, in the Journal of the American Medical Association, they also did a prospective study of the low salt diet versus a high salt diet. And there we found about three times the risk of cardiovascular death in the low salt diet group. The Cochrane Review uh, in 2012 is an international body well recognized for being an impartial and very scientifically based purveyor of the scientific evidence. And what they found was that when they looked at all the studies available to them, they broke it down into three groups. The first group, they said, well, if you don't have heart disease and you don't have high blood pressure, well, there seems to be perhaps a very, very small lowering of your risk of heart disease. However, that group that doesn't have heart disease and doesn't have high blood pressure isn't a group that you would generally uh, recommend to eat a low salt diet anyway. And the effect was very, very mild. In those people with no heart disease but did have high blood pressure, in fact, there was less of an effect. They could find no benefit whatsoever. And surprisingly, in those people who had heart disease, there was actually some evidence that eating a low salt diet was actually detrimental for you.
And this goes back to sort of basic principles that it is a trade-off. Whereas you can lower your blood pressure possibly by sort of one to three millimoles of mercury, you're also trading that off for uh, 25, 30, 40% increases in these other hormones, which can be quite harmful and that we're usually trying to block with our medications to preserve life. So in those people with heart disease, the ones that we generally stress the most to eat a low salt diet, in fact, there may not be any benefit. Thanks for watching everybody. If in case you missed it, you may want to check out the first video of this uh, salt uh, talking about the relationship between salt and high blood pressure and my previous lecture also on salt and heart disease. Thanks for watching everybody.